Hello, I'm John. I wanted to give you an update on what's happening around the global network. You'll be aware that WIN manages a network of 75 countries uh, with partners in, in, uh, across the globe in, in a number of regions. This week is significant because uh, a number of European countries have opened their borders. Uh, in France, restaurants, hotels, cafes are now allowed to open. This includes Paris, which was previously under a lockdown. Uh, our French partner has indicated strong demand for domestic travel and has done for the last couple of weeks. Uh, and now with the borders open, there's been some uh, significant increase in the demand for cross-border. A lot of this has focused on hotels and train traffic, but there is some flight reservations as well. Other countries that uh, are due to, uh, set to open this week uh, include Belgium, Austria, Croatia, Switzerland, Germany. Uh, the Czech Republic and Greece uh, are already open and uh, are allowing uh, access to many nationalities, although there are some restrictions in place for some. Uh, and our partner in Turkey, uh, which obviously borders uh, Europe uh, and uh, is, a, is a gateway to Asia as well, uh, has, in, has reported that uh, there has been a, uh, a, a significant uh, uptake in reservations for domestic travel. Um, and also the introduction this week, or the reintroduction this week, of a number of flights between Turkey and um, some of the countries, European countries, that have um, a large Turkish expat uh, community. So that's uh, like Germany and Austria. Um, but the Turks are being encouraged to um, holiday at home, uh, with the government introducing some holiday vouchers uh, and also some holiday loans to encourage them to use the uh, Turkish results. Elsewhere in Asia, it's a real mixed picture. Um, you may have seen in the news that there's been a secondary uh, spike in, in some Chinese cities, uh, and this is, uh, is obviously causing some, some concern. Uh, however, in domestic travel is still fairly strong there. Um, our partner in Hong Kong uh, had a positive BSP for May, and that's mainly around the fact that uh, Hong Kong Airport uh, is now uh, allowed to uh, offer transit facilities. So there's a lot of uh, through traffic coming through there and, and many advanced bookings for July and, and uh, August. Um, in Japan, um, our partners reported that uh, domestic travel, which has resumed, is sitting at around about 50% of where they would expect it to be. Uh, and then in Singapore, um, they've seen uh, many inquiries, but uh, there's not a lot of travel going on at the moment. So Asia seems to be a sort of a, a, a different picture to what uh, we were seeing in, in some of Europe. Uh, and I think previously we, we felt that there would be a, a, an east-west recovery. Uh, but uh, the main powerhouse, uh, the US, which is always a good indicator of what's happening in, in the world from a travel perspective, um, our partners there have reported that uh, as more states are open and lift the restrictions, uh, they've seen a, a significant uh, uptick. And when I say significant, obviously we get excited uh, that uh, any reservations obviously is, is a positive thing. But uh, from two weeks ago, they were sitting at around about 20% of where they would normally expect to be. Last week, they both reported that they're sitting around about 30% of the previous year. This is mainly driven by a lot of hotel reservations, uh, but flights are, are included in that as well. Um, and the airlines over there have reported they're sitting at around about 55 to 60% load factors based on the schedules you, they have. Uh, and these are likely to increase as we get closer to the 4th of July holidays, uh, where a lot of Americans obviously take uh, holiday time and there is significant demand on, on air schedules. So uh, I'd like to see more flights increase, more hotel bookings, and I think leading into that holiday break, uh, a number of our uh, partners will see that uh, leisure uh, requests will, will, will spike a bit. Some people have left it late, but uh, you know there are also some demand uh, ahead uh, of uh, that, uh, you know, uh, Fourth of July break for uh, 2021 holidays, uh, and people have been booking cruises, uh, and Hawaii seems to be a popular de destination at the moment. Uh, elsewhere in uh, Africa, um, we've got a partner in Kenya and South Africa. Um, they have still have a number of restrictions in place, um, and this is obviously uh, impacting on uh, their uh, ability to to make reservations. Uh, it's essential travel only in South Africa, 
you have to have a certificate to, to be able to travel. Um, although they have made some reservations um, outside of South Africa, um, some of them starting from Mozambique, which is a, obviously a, a positive sign, uh, but uh, they don't expect travel to resume, or corporate travel anyway, to, to resume until around about September. And then finally, finishing up with um, the UAE, uh, we've got uh, two partners there. Um, again, they are open um, and, and have been open for a, a couple of weeks now. Um, they've got uh, um, around about 50% of their staff working um, and uh, they're allowed to return to their offices. Um, the feeling is that leisure travel will, will uh, start in Dubai around about uh, mid to late July. Uh, and they're not expecting to see any corporate travel to maybe around about September, October time. But they are seeing a number of inquiries and uh, they, they believe it's, it's positive, uh, but they do believe that leisure will start before, before the corporate sector. Um, so that's a little bit of a, a roundup for you. Um, I can't forget obviously uh, LATAM, um, but uh, LATAM is, is a lot further back than, than um, some of the other countries. They are reliant on a number of other borders opening, but at the moment uh, they're, they're closed. So thank you and I look forward to giving you a catch up soon.